Hi Will, so uh, I understand you've been keeping bees for an awful long time. A fair while now, yeah. Good, so you will probably understand the importance, I hope, of, of swarm control to oh, a yeah. beekeeper. It's very important, um, particularly in the early season and right the way through the honey harvest. Without swarm control you could lose half your bees and therefore half your honey crop. But also, from a socially responsible point of view, particularly for urban beekeepers, you don't want yeah. to wind up the neighbours by a swarm of bees uh, descending upon the back door of their house or something. Trust or me, I know, I know. <laughs> I've been there, done that. But um, So the elements of a, of a swarm, I mean, what actually happens to your swarm of bees when that goes? I mean, from a beginner's perspective, I, I suppose they've got to know about it. The run-up to a swarm is basically your colony of bees has built up, it's filled the box, it's filled your hive, there's no real room for them to develop, grow further and the queen substance, which is the pheromone that the queen releases that makes all the bees in the colony feel, yeah, this is a nice place to live, mm -hmm. is, well, there's so many bees, there's not enough queen substance to go around. So there's a little bit of disharmony, not aggression or narkiness in the bees. It's just the, they, the they're, not, they're, not, they're not happy where they are. They're feeling, really, we're a bit cramped. I think it's time to move on, guys. And at that point, what they'll do is they will draw out a, a special cell called a queen cell and they will force the queen to lay into that cell, uh, an egg, and they'll probably do that two or three times over the course of a day. Yeah. And those cells will be drawn out and will become queens. At the point at which those cells are capped, that's when the old queen goes, oh right, I've got the hint now, I'm right. off. Okay. Um, and any time from when those cells are capped to up to a day or so before they, the new queens emerge, the queen will leave the hive and most of the bees in the hive will follow her. And they'll do a couple of circuits of the hive usually. And during that circuits, half of them will return back to the hive and the rest will go off with the queen. And so that's, that is the swarm. If, if I'm a beginner beekeeper, let's just assume I've, I've got my hive all together. It's working fine. Mm -hmm. When's the first point that I get worried? When you start to see um, queen cells, if this is happening very early in the season, then I would suggest that potentially it's a lack of space rather than a lack of queen substance. So perhaps stick another, uh, put a, a, another super underneath the queen it's so that it go on to brood and a half, or potentially another brood box if you want to, if, if you're using a particularly prolific variety of bees. Provide more space. Provide more space, early on in the season, definitely. And as, assuming you've seen the queen, mm -hmm. um, remove that queen cell. Don't immediately uh -huh. remove queen cells. It's one of the first mistakes beekeepers do at the beginning is they see a queen cell fear and they pull the queen cell out. Now, that potentially could be the worst mistake of their career on the basis that the queen may have died. The meat uh. queen may have been damaged or may have stopped laying, may have come to her at the end of her useful life. Um, particularly if it's a queen collected from a swarm Mm -hmm. because you've got no idea of how old the queen is. So she may be five years old when you collected her. So early in the season, more space. More space. Later on in the season, kind of... Later on in the season, when they get a bit more keen on producing these queen cells, you see more and more of them. That's when I would look to do uh, an artificial swarm. I've heard this term uh, quite a lot. I mean, and that you need extra kit available yeah, at you... your disposable? Look, most, most people, when they're starting up beekeeping, will potentially they will have bought a nucleus of of bees and they'll have their newt box mm -hmm. that they had the bees arrive in originally so that's really handy so you can do your artificial swarm. In an artificial swarm you take the existing queen mm -hmm. and three four frames of brood from the hive right. and put that into the nucleus hive and mm -hmm. move that away. Right. It doesn't have to be miles away just three foot away from the previous colony. Some of the bees from there, the flying bees, will go back to the old colony and that's fine. Right. But the queen will exist with the young workers that are generally working and that will become a second colony. That primary colony, those queen cells will develop into queens, mm -hmm. the queens will fly, mate, or one of them will fly, mate, and return to the colony. Because if, if, if I'm right, it's my understanding that the queens, they do have stings themselves. Oh yes, most definitely. And basically the, the queen will come out and a queen will only sting another queen. Yes. So is it the first queen that comes out or the strongest queen that the will first, come out the and first, sting the others? Generally speaking, I have seen when queen cells have emerged, and I've, I've caught the hive the day the queens have come out, I have actually found 
two or even sometimes three virgin queens in a colony running around chasing each other. The last one standing is, is, is the one that gets the chance to leave the hive, mate, right. and then return to carry on the good works of the previous queen. It kind of follows suit with what traditionally the swarm is all about, which is swarm is all about keeping the colonies alive, isn't it? That's yeah, how I mean, bees have managed to live for 150 it, it, million years. It's just the natural, it's just the way bees reproduce. A, a strong colony of bees would naturally send out two or three swarms in a season. So, so rather than something to be, I mean, really feared, which I think a lot of people do fear a bee swarm, oh, I think it's one of these yeah. things which people see in trees and get frightened about. Really, I mean, swarms should be celebrated because it's oh, a way yeah, of no, colonies yeah. keeping on going. But I mean, from a member of the public's uh, perspective, I mean, it's my understanding that bee swarms are actually probably bees in a very placid and docile state. Is that fair well, the to say? La the last thing a swarm of bees does before it leaves the hive is to fill itself up with as much honey as it possibly can to carry and, and find a new home. Going back to this uh, beginner standpoint, let's assume that I've made the decision that I can't afford the money to, to go and buy a nucleus of bees. I've made the decision that I want to I want to collect a swarm. Right. What what would you recommend as a process that a beginner beekeeper should follow right. in order to do that? As a beginner beekeeper, first of all, I want to emphasise responsibility. Okay. Now, if you've got other beekeepers around you, then you've got to seriously look about whether collecting a swarm and bringing it into a communal apiary is a good mm -hmm. idea from a disease point of view. But assume that you're going to keep your colony of bees on your own in your back garden, not surrounded by other bees and beekeepers. Great. So you've gone out, you've got your swarm. But I mean, how do you get that? I mean, is it a case of you, you talk to your local association and say, right, I'm, I'm very interested in getting a, a swarm, a swarm of, bees. of bees. That's essentially the starting yeah, point, is it? That's the starting point. I will be very honest in the fact that I think that a beginner going out to a swarm of bees for the first time and trying to collect it for themselves as um, I had some very very interesting phone calls over this season where beginner beekeepers have gone out and tried to collect the swarm. I've, I've had this phone call of this sort of crazed beekeeper trying to collect their first swarm. How do I do it? <laughs> um, it doesn't really work I imagine. And, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's not quite as simple as the books say. Um, I mean, so which arguably basically says you, you have your box, you put it under a tree branch where the swarm might be, tap the bees in and they fall magically into your box perfectly yeah, and, bees, and then you leave them for a bit. Bees do very much in the swarm state behave almost like a thick liquid. Um, so theoretically it's, it's very easy but practically it's not. Theoretically it's easy but I mean say that swarm of bees doesn't decide to land on a tree or a branch or a shrub, or it decides to land on a gravel driveway. That'd be nice and easy. <laughs> um, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, it, it, how do you get your hive underneath it to tap on the, you yeah. know, you've got to be a little bit flexible. If you've had a swarm reported to you, find your mentor if they're available to go yeah. out and collect the swarm with you. Or hope for the best that somebody in your local association says, well, I've got a swarm, I'll come and collect your brood box, we'll, f we'll fill that with bees and hmm. put the bees in the box. I have a belief as a, as a beekeeper that if it is remotely possible, collect the bees in the box you intend them to stay in for the mm. first four or five weeks of you looking after them at the very least. Mm. Because every time you move the bees from the branch to the box, that's stressing the bees once. From the cardboard box to the sheet, twice. Yeah. From the sheet to the hive, three times. Yeah. I would personally put the bees from the cardboard box straight in the hive. You recommend do in, in the box it comes out. And it's, it's fascinating really because I mean I suppose as the beekeeping year progresses swarm control becomes key in several stages throughout that mm. year. Oh yeah. Um, I mean as a beginner then I suppose you've got to factor in if you're going to get a swarm of bees for you that's one element of a swarm control. You've then got obviously how your bees are reacting within the hive is another element of swarm control. Mm. So yep. really Factoring, you know, having a knowledge, an in-depth knowledge of swarm is, is very, yeah. very important. Okay, oh, that's great. Well, thanks, Will. That's, uh, that's good. Very interesting. All right. Tell me a little bit about swarm control. Fantastic. Good. Glad to hear it.